this project, we're going to walk through building an R Studio cluster in AWS. This cluster is deployed using infrastructure as code and provides a fully automated, scalable R Studio environment in the cloud. This project builds directly on the mini AD and EFS foundation we created earlier. We still have a Samba based domain controller providing authentication and an EFS based file system for shared storage. But now we take it a step further. With Terraform, we provision not only the directory and file services, but also a cluster of RStudio servers that run behind an application load balancer and an autoscaling group. Packer is used to build a custom AMI that includes RStudio, the R runtime, and essential system packages required for compiling R packages. The autoscaling group continuously monitors clustered load, and when average CPU utilization rises above 60%, it automatically adds additional RStudio servers to, the, to ensure consistent performance and availability for users. The cluster design ensures that users can log in with their Active Directory credentials, get seamless access to shared libraries and data on EFS, and work in an environment that feels like a single unified RStudio server, even though it's powered by multiple servers. By the end of this project, you'll see how these pieces fit together, Active Directory for identity, EFS for storage, Packer for custom builds, and Terraform for orchestration. Together, they create a robust, reproducible platform for RStudio running in AWS. Now let's take a look at the architecture diagram of what we're going to build. We are in US East 1, and our network is going to be the AD VPC. It's going to handle everything. So in that network, we have five subnets. The first subnet is the AD subnet. We now have a module that we're going to use for that. And in the module, the best practice is to put AD in its own subnet. So that's going to be the rstudio.mycloud.com domain controller. Then we have two public subnets. Now, the first public subnet, we're going to put the EFS file gateway in the Windows AD admin box for managing users. We also have the RStudio application load balancer. And since an application load balancer requires two subnets, we went ahead and added a second public subnet just for the application load balancer. Next, we go into the cluster. So in the cluster, we have two private subnets, VM subnet 1 and VM subnet 2. This is where the instances are placed by the autoscaling group. And we also, we have an EFS instance. In that EFS instance, we have to drop network cards for every availability zone. So we did it in both VM subnets. So that ensures access to EFS in all these boxes. And then finally, when we provision the domain controller, we provisioned a series of Active Directory accounts that we'll use in the demo. And what we do is we create random credentials and in the credentials, we stick them in secrets. So during the demo, we'll go back and forth to secrets to get the credentials to log into various services. Let's talk about the prerequisites. I'll put up at the top there a link to the AWS and Terraform Easy Setup. That video walks you through creating a secret and access creed, access key needed for Terraform builds in a very simple project. So if you've never done one of our projects before, that's a good place to start. So the four things that you're going to need for this project is first is that AWS account and the access and secret key for doing Terraform builds. Then you'll need the AWS CLI, which is the glue between the build phases. Then you'll need the latest version of Terraform. And then finally, we use Packer for the AMI builds, so we need the latest version of Packer. Let's go through the build workflow. Like all our projects, our main build script is applied SH. And so there are four phases to this build of this project. The first phase, which is in the 01 directory folder, is we deploy mini AD and the networking that we've described above. This is done with Terraform. Once that is done and the AD controller is, is deployed, we deploy some EC2 servers. We have two EC servers that we deploy. The first one is the EFS gateway, and the second one is the Windows admin box. The Windows admin box is what we'll use in the demo for creating users and managing users. EFS is also deployed in this phase. This is in the 02 servers folder. And those instances, when they are started, the user data script joins them to the Active Directory domain. So they're both joined. So you end up with two EC2 instances that are joined to the domain, one Linux and one Windows. The next phase is the Packer build. And this is where we build the RStudio AMI. Now this takes quite a bit of time, about 10 minutes. And the reason it takes so much time is for R to actually install R packages, you have to install a series of tools and compilers. So we install a Fortran compiler. We can install a C++ compiler. We install CMake, Make, 
Well, all these tools for building, because when we show in the demo, when you actually deploy or install on our package, it actually compiles it and deploys it. So you need all that, those build tools for that process. The last phase is we're going to take that AMI and we're going to build an RStudio auto scaling cluster. And in that cluster, we're going to have an application uh, load balancer and then an auto scaling group. And it's going to use that AMI with a launch template. And that's in the O4 cluster directory. So at this point, I think we're ready to actually do the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code right here. And I'm going to bring up my Ubuntu development environment, paste it in. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run the check ENV script. And that check ENV script is going to go check, hey, do you have AWS? Hey, do you have Terraform? Hey, do you have Packer? Hey, do you have JQ? All these are required for the build. And then it's going to log in to the AWS using the credentials and make sure that you have access. Okay, at this point, we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes about 20 minutes. Um, as before, if you have any questions about the build or the project in general, feel free to put it in the comment sections below. The build has completed. And so now what we want to do is bring up the AWS console and take a, let's take a look at what got built. So in the console, the first thing we're going to do is go look at the networking. So I'm going to go to VPC. Then you want to click on the AD VPC, which contains everything. So we're going to bring that up and we're going to see the little diagram. And this batches the five subnets from our AWS diagram. We've got pub subnet one, pub subnet two. It's going through a public route light table to an internet gateway. Then we have the private subnet, VM subnet one, VM subnet two. It's going through a private route table to a NAT gateway. And then we have the AD subnet, which isolates the AD implementation. And it also goes through a private route table and to a NAT gateway. So that's the, the network at a high level. So the next thing we want to do is go into the EC2 section of the console. In the instance sections of the console, what you see is we have five instances. So the first instance that we have is the mini AD box. That's going to be the RStudio mcloud.com um, domain controller, and it's in a separate, separate subnet. Then next to that, you've got the Windows AD admin box. This is the box that we'll use to log in as as a Windows user and be able to manage the AD users using the um, Windows snap-ins for AD users and groups. Then we have the EFS Samba gateway that is mounting the FS file system, initializing the file system, and then also uh, deploying a Samba file server to share the EFS so the Windows side can see the EFS, which normally is only available on Linux. Then we have these two RStudio instances, and I'll defer to that. Those are the part of the autoscaling cluster, and we'll, we'll look at that when we get into the autoscaling cluster itself. So those are the, the five instances. So what we want to look at is, okay, let's go to AMIs. You'll see that we built that Packer AMI, and it's sitting there. It's tagged with a, the timestamp, so you can run this multiple times. It'll always pick the latest. Then we have the load balancer. This is the application load balancer. We're serving HTTP. Uh, we didn't want to worry about certificates here. We would normally want to run this with HTTPS, but for a lab, we're just going to run it in straight HTTP. You click on that, and that's the actual uh, DNS entry that we'll use to log into our studio. These are the two subnets. This is pub subnet one and pub subnet two. From there, you've got the, uh, and we're running the load balancer on port 80. So it will, uh, you don't have to put, you're basically, you don't have to specialize a port. You just put HTTP in this and you'll get it. And this goes to the target group. You'll see we have two targets. Now the RStudio instances actually run on port 8787, but the load balancer routes the traffic to 87. So to the end user, it looks like you're going into port 80, even though the traffic is actually 8787. We also use stickiness. This is not a stateful web service. Once you've logged in, you want to make sure that you're, you're hitting the exact same server. So we use stickiness and we have a one day duration for sticky so you'll get bound up to one server per day now we're ready to look at i guess the other thing is we've got the launch template that gets created and the launch template this is where we poke in that ami that we created and in the advanced details you'll notice on the um, user data script this is where we mount the fs file system and join the instance to the domain so at this point we're going to look at the auto scaling groups. 
And this is the, the what, what manages the cluster. So we have the R, R Studio Auto Scaling Group. It is using the launch template we've looked at. If you go to instance management, you'll see the two instances, the M5 large, um, which is a, a pretty beefy instance for a lab, but that's what's best for R. And this is connected to those two VM subnet one, VM sub two, two. So these are all private using a NAT gateway, but the, the application load balancer is public. So we've got EFS, just like the previous one. This is the main file system on that and you'll see the network this is where it's connected with the two in, with the two network cards into our two availability zones 1a and 1d so the last thing that got built is of course the secrets manager when we created the ad controller we provisioned a series of accounts we've got the ad admin credentials we've got raj patel emily davis uh, Amit Kumar and, and John Smith. They, these are the same users we use in all our projects. So you're probably familiar with them at this point. And so I'm going to leave this panel up because we end up using these panels when we do the demo. To test the cluster, first thing we're going to do is go back to our validation output. And we've got the ALB endpoint right here. This is the application load balancer. So I'm going to copy this and bring it up in my browser session. And does it say log in? So this is where you put your Active Directory credentials. We're going to log in as R Patel. And I'm going to go in and get his credentials. Copy that. So we've logged in as Raj Patel. And note we have a terminal session in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do ID. And the thing that I keep in mind is Raj Patel is a member of R Studio Admins. So that means this user can actually install packages. So if you go to your files pane, you've got um, EFS, that's the file system. What I'm going to do is show a couple of examples. So I'm going to go to the cluster. This is the, the project that's pulled um, onto the server when we build it. And so let's go to um, our samples and let's look at the cowboy hat. Everybody loves the cowboy hat. I'm going to run that. And you see you've got the, the cowboy hat here. Um, there's also files. We've got a uh, walk simulation. Run that. Every time you run it, you get a different uh, different values. Then what else do we have in here? We've got Harlo. I'll run that. Click on that. Click on source. And it's going to run. So those are just sort of a basic R programs that you can run. Now, the one thing that I wanted to, to cover here was if I go into back to my file and I go to packages.r, there's various ways you can install packages. There's system libraries and there's user libraries. The way I've configured this R Studio is all users can install stuff into their user libraries. But if they happen to be in that group that we talked about, the um, R Studio admins, they can also install packages for everybody else. And the reason that's important is because we're going to run through this package here. And it takes quite a bit of time to install. So I'm going to run this guy right here. And that's going to run ESL and install it in EFS R Lives. So it's going to compile a bunch of stuff. And it's done compiling. And so if I go back to the file system here, and I go up and I go to R Lives, you see it installed into GSL. And so this is installed for all users. I'm, a, I'm an admin. And so anybody else that logs in from this point forward can in, actually use the GSL package without having to um, compile it again. Now, if I wasn't a member of our studio admins, and what we're gonna do is create a user, a new user that is not, you'll see what happens there. You can still do the thing, but you'll have to run it in your own library. The next step in the demo is we are going to add a new user and then test that new user and make sure it works. So what we need to do is we're gonna use the Windows AD box. So I'm gonna go back, I have the remote desktop connection there. Back in here, and I'm gonna put in the Windows instance fully qualified domain. Put that into here, and I, I want to log in as our Studio Patel. So I'll do. Um, I need to use a different account. Our Studio R Patel. I need to go back to Secrets Manager. Pull that out. Put it in there. So the session is going to come up and what we want to do is we want to bring up 
the administrative tools and go to Active Directory's users and groups. Once Active Directory users and groups come up, so the first thing you want to do is you want to select view and say advanced features. And the reason we're going to do that is because we need to set UID number, UID and GID number for the user to present itself properly on the Linux side. So we've done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out the tree here. I'm going to go to users and I'm going to say new user and I'm going to say Mike Cloud and a user ID of mcloud. Hit next. Put whatever password you want in there. So we've done the first step. We've created the user and it's in here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate what the next UID number is. And we do have a special script in there. So if you bring up the uh, Windows Explorer and you go to the network drive and so to the, go to the Z drive, which is the EFS mounted through a Samba gateway and click on our studio cluster and click on utils and let's run get next UID. Run that and it's going to go look it up and say, hey, your next UID number is 10,005. So now let's keep that in mind and let's go back to the user and let is bring up the property sheet on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the it, attribute editor and there's three attributes you need to set. GID number, 10,001 is our studio users. So I'm going to set that. Then I'm going to go to the bottom and find UID, UID number, there's UID. I'm going to put mcloud as the UID. Click on add, okay. And then UID number is 10,005. Let's click okay. Apply, hit okay. And so the one other thing we need to do, we need to go to a member of, and we need to add this user to our studio.users. And then we need to set, I'm just going to put it in the US group. Now, note we're not going to put them R Studio Admins group. So it should not allow me to install GSL as this user. Say here, let's, let's go back to that script and say get next UID. And it now is 10,006 because we've set 10,005. At this point, we're ready to test the new user. Okay, so go back to the R Studio login dialog and put in mcloud and put the password that you set. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to terminal and I'm going to say ID. And you should see those UID attributes that we put in there, UID number, GID number, and we're not a member of R Studio users. So let's go back to EFS here and let's go to the cluster and we've got the same thing. We got the R sample, so I'm going to click on that. We'll just do a volcano plot just for grins, hit source, and you've got the volcano plot. But what we really want to do is we want to go to the packages.r, and I'm going to try to install it in the actual uh, common location, EFSR Live. So I'm going to run that, and it's going to go, hey, you don't have permissions, is not writable. I want to use your personal library. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll go back to here and comment that out. And this will install it into your personal library. Compile finished. And so if you do, if you go back to your files and let's go up, 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 and let's go to your R. This is in your home directory. And if I click on that, 4.3, it put GSL in the actual, your actual home directory. So I could use it but it's just for me. Whereas when I installed with Raj Patel's identity, I could install it for everybody and everybody could skip the compiles. So that's pretty much it for adding a, a new user. You know, you, you do it on the a Windows AD admin box. And at this point, the only thing left to do is to be good stewards of your cloud account and to destroy your project. So I'm gonna go back to my um, thing, I'm gonna clear, and I'm gonna do destroy. And the destroy takes about 15 minutes.